Bonjour à tous! Hello, I'm Eva Kubini, graphic designer and partner at Integral Rue du Bauer Paris for over 25 years. Currently, I'm a professor for typography at the University of Applied Sciences in Aachen, Germany. This talk is about the research project Typo, a mobile app for recognizing and classifying typefaces. Its goal is not to automatically identify individual fonts, but to facilitate the learning of how to recognize their underlying formal principles. I'm happy to be here today at Atypi, where we present the project to public for the very first time. Hello everyone, I'm Robin Köhn. I'm working as a visual expert at the intersection of technology and design in Berlin. And I've met Eva while working at the Atelier Integral Rudi Bauer in Paris and since then collaborated with her. First as a lecturer at FA Aachen and then later on in the project Typo. I was actually very thrilled when Eva came up with the idea of a web app for typographical classifications as I can still remember how confused I was as a student about all the different classifications from different people and even from different countries. So I thought that a web app with detailed information about it would be a perfect contemporary tool for students. It all started with an assignment in typography class when I sent my students from the first year in graphic design into urban space for typography safari. This exercise has a lot of success with the students as it's an initiation to look carefully at typographic forms. I then asked the students to identify the typefaces with existing tools for automatic identification. This was a complete disaster as 100 students tried to identify 12 typefaces each and mostly came up with wrong results. I realized I had to find another way to explain the different typographic forms. Thinking about possible solutions of the problem, I remembered the step-by-step -step identification guides for mushrooms that we used in the pre-internet area and transposed this principle to typeface identification. Instead of a book, it seemed obvious that a mobile digital solution would fit better today's needs. As my students mainly use their mobile phones to take pictures of typography, I decided to implement the identification guide in their phones. It was like sneaking a part of the university library into their pockets. In the beginning, an extensive research about typeface classification systems had to be done. You are probably familiar with the classification that Maximilian Vox proposed in 1954, then established as Vox Altaipi classification in 1962 and extended in 2010. In Germany, where I teach, the Dean classification from 1964 is in use. As you can see, the terminology is quite unpronounceable, even for Germans. The British Standards classification from 1967 is based on the former named systems. All three classifications follow the same structure, partly based on historic evolution of typefaces. Well, so there are some little differences. We can notice that a detailed distinction of the serif typefaces has been made by the Frenchman Maximilian Vox. The German DIN classification puts focus on black letter typefaces, establishing five subcategories. The British Standard puts focus on sans serif typefaces, establishing four subcategories. These classification systems are taught to students, but they are rarely used in practice. When we look at contemporary resources like websites from foundries, blogs or literature about typography, we come across a different, simplified terminology. These terms and group divisions in current international use have been relied on in the app to meet a broad public and make the content accessible and easy to understand. We identified current terminology for the three languages that we wanted to include in the project. As typography has a long tradition, every language has its own terms. We wanted students to learn this terminology in their own language and be able to understand literature in other languages as well. So, to use the app, enter the URL of Typo Project, 
Then copy the app onto your mobile screen. A short sequence explains you the major functions. Close the pop-up and get started. The starting page is the Learn section with an overview of the main categories. Each of them is supplemented with historical information and explanations of formal particularities. The menu below provides access to all sections. The categories are Serif, Slab Serif, Sans Serif, Display, Handwritten and Blackletter. Each category is illustrated by a typeface. Further sample typefaces can be accessed via link. Synonyms and translations are crucial information, as multiple terms are currently in use. Historical background helps better understanding of influences, formal models and typeface evolution. For certain terms, information about terminology is provided. The font examples can be enlarged with a magnifying glass for a more detailed view. These informations are provided for every typeface category. Users slide directly from one category to another. The typeface categories can be easily distinguished by anyone. For students and experts, an additional level of subcategories is needed. The existing typeface classifications are not very helpful here. The principles of form, based on writings from Gerrit Nordseil and theorized by Indra Kopferschmidt and Hans-Peter Wilberg, amongst others, are more helpful here. Especially in text typefaces, we can distinguish between dynamic, static and geometric letter forms. Defining these subcategories helps us to see and understand the underlying formal principles and to make a better use of type, for instance, when combining typefaces. So, we decided to use these subcategories that are actually in use for the text typefaces. That's what you see on the left side. The other subcategories follow the existing classification norms. So, as the Dean Committee actually works on a new typeface classification, they might have to be adapted in future. As the app is conceived for multiple languages, terminology has been translated into English, German and French. Based on terms actually in use, we try to keep names short, to avoid historic reference and to use logic terms for subdivision. For instance, dynamic serif being a further specification of a serif typeface. In the app, each category has an overview of the subcategories. A link leads to the relating information. Here is an example of dynamic sans serif typeface subcategory. It is illustrated by a typeface. Further sample typefaces can be accessed by a link. Synonyms and translations, historical information, formal principles and other features are detailed. The user can slide from one subcategory to another to visualize and compare the formal principles. It became clear quite quickly that there was a lot of terminology that had to be explained, as the app is destined to beginners. So we collected most important technical terms and elaborated a glossary. 
This is the main page of the glossary. It is reached via the menu or via a link in the text, where one can access directly to a specific term. Links lead to the other sections of the app. In the Identify section, users can compare typefaces found in everyday life, for example in the cityscape, or that they encounter in their studies, with the models shown and make a gradual identification. In the first step, one distinguishes main categories, with serifs, without serifs, handwritten or black letter. For instance, let's choose without serif. This distinction can be made without expert knowledge. Then the stroke contrast is determined. This step is a little more difficult. Eventually, you might want to check the glossary to read about different types of contrast. The examples that are displayed help making the right choice. Then the formal principle is determined. Sometimes this step is not so easy, as typefaces can have multiple attributes or be in between two formal principles, just like a color gradient. Sometimes it's difficult to distinguish blue and green. Finally, typefaces can be differentiated according to other features like glyph style, materiality, technology, usage, etc. They have no bearing on the classification, but they are quite helpful when you want to describe a typeface. With the result, the identification path is detailed. The correct classification depends on the precision of the identification path. As a didactic exercise, the typeface to be determined can be compared with the result of the step-by-step -step identification in class. This identify section is the perfect tool for prospective designers on a theoretical as well as practical level. The students not only learn about interesting typographical background informations, but can also find new inspirations. Say, when they discover a nice poster in the city with a font they find very appealing, they can identify the category to which the typeface belongs. With this info, they can swipe over to the font section and filter it for the respective category to find other associated or similar fonts from this category. This process consequently builds up the student's typographical horizon of experience. As we consider knowledge about typefaces necessary for using them, we added a specific section. The fonts catalog has a didactic selection of more than 100 typefaces with relevant background information. The selection includes typefaces that are relevant to understand the evolution of forms, prototypes for better understanding of the classification and the features. We included many contemporary typefaces from the 21st century. The typefaces in the fonts catalog can be filtered and displayed according to specific criteria, such as by category, the formal principles, favorites, etc. The fonts are shown in different forms of representation, as a single line pangram with a movable line, as a three line pangram with a zoom function, and at the end of each typeface description as a single letter. All typefaces are classified according to their respective regular style font. Other variations like weight, Optical size, width and slant are not listed separately. Here in the play section, users can check what they've learned playfully. Correct answers are shown after each question. Thanks to the power of combinatorics, the game offers new constellations in each round as the questions and images in the extensive database are always recombined. The level of difficulty can vary. If the user classifies more than 50% of the questions correctly, the user is rewarded with some goodies. This could be relevant websites, um, some information about fonts, 
or other news from the typography scene? So this is the end of our talk. The project was carried out at the Department of Design at the Fachhochschule Aachen, Germany. We would like to thank all the foundries and designers that supported us, as well as our funders. Currently, the app is available in English and German. French and Spanish translations are planned. So, thank you very much for staying tuned. Check out the app and Instagram.